Hi guys. Is it working? Did I? Oh. Oh, there we go. I had to plug in my phone because it's 9 a.m. and somehow my phone is halfway dead. Listen, I, I, I don't, it's, I do all my work for my phone. So my phone, like, can you imagine? Like, oh, it's 9 a.m. Like, I charge my phone all night. Hey, Lena. Hi, Sunshine Living. Hey, Ms. Supreme Leader. Ooh, I like that. Hey, Lynette. Hi, Sh Shrunk Cattle Wife. Is it Shrunk? Tiffany. Hey, Kaylin. Hi, everybody. Wow, I'm so excited you guys are here. Hey, Hannah. You guys. Oh, the co-host of The Dating Detectives, Hannah Andergram. Wait, is this Instagram? Yeah. I have Hannah in my phone as Hannah Anderpod because Hannah Andertalk. Anyways, um, Hannah is the co-host of... Um, Hannah is the co-host of Dating Detectives, the podcast. Oh, I have hair in my mouth. Um, dating detectives sure ain't controversial unless you're a dogfish. <laughs> Did you ever imagine that you didn't log on and instantly had 200 people pop on to see you? Actually, that's so funny that you said that because the reason I wanted to pop on was because so many people actually, um, they ask so many questions about like my job and stuff. And so I think that it's really fun to know, like, it's really fun to share that information just because both of my jobs are so controversial, which is like kind of why like I'll talk about them a little bit, but also like I'm kind of scared too because I think that people is, um, people is kind of, people is, I think that people really want to know like what I do, but then when I talk about it, sometimes I feel weird. So anyways, um, Hey, Lindsay. Oh, I have so many loves here. I'm so excited to see you guys. Um, so anyways, if you're new here, my name is Mackenzie. I'm a private investigator as well as a saint artist. So I'm in the field of like being nosy and spying on people. And then I'm also in the field of like sling and makeup. So it's kind of weird. Like, oh, you're in Riverview. Yay. Hi. I went to Riverview High School. Do people recognize you from Insta when you're doing PI work? No, not really. Not yet, anyways. I'm a stay-at-home mom, FBI part-time. <laughs> I'm so good at digging information. You should get paid for it. So, hi in Canada. Oh, you guys are so sweet. Hi, Donna. Thanks, Lainey. Um, that's awesome. Um, so anyway, so I came on to kind of share a little bit about both jobs because I get asked about them so much, right? So First, I want to talk about like my, and I'm going to get ready for my day. So if you have any questions about what I'm using, just ask, but I will do a makeup tutorial too, because that's part of my job. Anyways, um, so I am, wait, Massachusetts and New Hampshire. Oh, North Dakota. You guys are all over. This is funsies. Um, okay. So uh, I don't know if you know my story as far as being like a private investigator goes, but I have been a PI for 16 years. And this is where my story starts, like kind of like I did PI or I did other stuff. Like I worked at Bank of America um, while I was in college and not like in the bank. I worked in the operations center of Bank of America. That was like my first, not my first real job. Like I worked at the movie theater and I worked at like finish line and stuff. But my first like real, real job was at Bank of America. And I was working there, Start I started as a teenager and then kind of worked for several years while I was in college. And I did, I worked in a department where we like find all the missing money in the bank, right? So I worked for, uh, I can't remember the name of the department, but basically like have you ever made a deposit and it like didn't show up or something, or maybe the money was just like missing and whatever. So it was my job to go and find that missing money. And there was only like 12 people and they were all ladies, 12 people in the whole bank of America that could find the missing money. Right. And so I was on that team. And so it was really cool. Never actually worked in a banking center. We just provided support to the banking centers and, you know, worked with the federal reserve, whatever. So that's what I did during college while I was getting a degree in criminal justice. Okay. So I would go to, I would go to work during the day at Bank of America and I did some internships, a little bit at the FDLE crime lab and a little bit of, you know, a little stuff here and there that was, you know, just while I was working full time and I was going to college and I was in school full time, working full time and doing like intern stuff. Anyways, so 
towards the end of getting my degree in criminal justice, I actually had a class where we were talking about different careers that you could do as like with your criminal justice degree, right? So like different jobs that you could do that would you know, either require your degree or that your, your degree would help you in. Right. So it's like a, you know, Hey, you're about to graduate kind of class. So I was, I was graduating with my bachelor's degree and I'm sitting in this class and I, it's with a bunch of other kids. Right. And I need you to know that this is not like negative, like self-talk or anything like that. But when I was younger, I was not the prettiest girl. Like I was fat, I didn't know how to do makeup, hair, nothing. Like, I was really homely looking, y'all. Like, it was bad. Like, I wore dudes camo cargo shorts from Target and, like, a baggy t-shirt and flip-flops. Like, I was, like, I dressed like a dude to hide my body. Like, everything was really um, baggy, and I just wasn't a very pretty girl. Like, I'm not I'm not saying that to be mean. It was just I always got called fat and ugly. It was, it was no secret that I was not a cute girl, right? So my, um, in order to kind of like combat that and not have people like make fun of me, I had to be funny. Cause my thing is, well, if you're not going to be pretty, you got to be funny. And so this was my mindset, you know, back in those days. And so I was always like class clown or whatever. So the, when the professor was talking about the different degrees that we could, or the different jobs we could do with our degree, I would, um, you know, everybody's talking, Oh, I want to be a cop or I want to be a lawyer or whatever. Well, I wanted to be on the SWAT team. I wanted to kick down doors and blow shit up. Like I wanted to be on the bomb squad. Like I love um, when my dad was a cop and he actually was a, a firearms instructor instructor for the sheriff's office where he worked. And um, so that was something we did together. And so I, I'm very well trained and that's just something that I, we enjoyed doing. It was a, a favorite pastime, right? So I just, I wanted to like maybe follow in his footsteps a little bit, even though we weren't that close, daddy issues, whatever. Um, so everybody's talking about all the different things they wanted to do when it came to me and I said I want to be on the SWAT team and my college professor looks at me and he says well you can't have your nails done if you're going to be on the SWAT team and I liked having my nails done despite not being someone who was girly my fingers are short and fat right like they're very ch uh, very chubby I've lost 100 pounds and they're still really chubby um and so when I don't have nails on, like my fingers just look chubbier. And so I have always had my nails done. And he, he said, you can't be on the SWAT team. You don't have your nails done. Like you're going to have to take the, like very kind of sexist. Right. And so I'm like, all right, well, and so being someone who's always kind of been made fun of, I just kind of, I brushed it off and didn't think anything of it. And then I was like, well, back to the whole thing about like, if you're not pretty, you got to be funny. So I'm the class clown. So I wanted to say something funny. So I said, fine. Well, if I can't do that, then I'll make my own rules and do my own investigations and I'll have my own agency and I'm going to be a private dick and I'm 20. So like, you know, you say the word dick and the whole class, ha ha ha, like we're all immature. Right? So I said, I'm going to be a private dick. And everybody laughed and I was like, ha, ha, like, you know, got the response that I wanted. I wasn't serious. And then he said, you'll never make it. I'm sorry. You'll never make it in that industry because you're a girl and that's a man's industry. And that's exactly what he said to me. And he pointed his finger at me just like that. And I was like, oh. And so I knew in that moment that I had to because he told me that I couldn't because I was a girl, right? So I was like, all right, bet. Well, I'm, I have a full-time job. Like I'm not thinking about like a full-time career or anything. Right. So I'm, I decided, well, I'm going to try and be a PI then. This dude told me I couldn't. So I didn't tell him that. I was just like, it just kind of sat in my head. So I went on about my life, my business, whatever. And I graduated college and with my criminal justice degree, top of my class, because I'm a little smarty pants. I was always a bookworm. And, um, so, and because I'm so competitive, like I had to be top of my class. So he tells me I couldn't do it because I was a girl. And so that's what I wanted to do. So I continued working, but while I'm working now, I wanted to, now I actually want to like, you know, do this thing. That's a PI that he says that I can't do. So I'm like, all right. So I'm looking it up on the Google machine and I'm like fired up. So I look up online how to be a private investigator and I, like in Florida and I looked it up and it gives you these steps, right? And it says, you got to do this and you got to take this course and you know, you got to have this or whatever. And so I do all the things, submit all the things. I do the, the licensing and the, you know, background check and the fingerprints and literally all the things that were required of me, right? I did them because I wanted to, I was like, he says that I can't, but like, 
I wonder if I really can. And so I did. And before you know it, like they're sending me a license and I'm like, okay. And so I'm a poor college student, right? Like I'm like, I had just graduated. I'm in debt up to my eyeballs because I thought credit cards were like magical money. They aren't like, you really actually have to pay those. I didn't know that when I was, well, I did know that, but like, I didn't want anyways. Um, so I'm like, I have no money. I'm poor. I'm working full time. And so I didn't have the money for like, you know, my dad had co-signed for me for a car and I didn't have the money to get like a camera and like binoculars and get my windows tinted and all this stuff. So for Christmas that year, I asked for a camera and a GPS, which back in the day, we didn't have GPS on our phone. This was like, you know, almost 20 years ago. Like we had a Tom Tom or a Garmin. If you know, like if you know, you know, okay. And like the roads were never updated on it, whatever. Well, before Christmas, I, I started as a PI before Christmas, I, which means that I had to find someone who would sponsor me, which means they hired me as a, as a, like a baby PI is what I call it. Or my friend Shelby calls it that, but um, I had a baby license, like an intern license, and you had to find someone to sponsor you, which means they hire you, but they're responsible for your hours and stuff like that, right? So I'm like, all right, so um, it was right before Christmas, so I, I asked for all that stuff for Christmas, because I was like, I don't have the money to get it, so that's just what I'm going to ask for for Christmas. And so before I started, like, she, the very first case that the the, the lady that hired me gave me she gave me an address and it was in a whole different county like an hour away and so I put it into the map quest like mapquest.com which if you're not familiar with that it's basically like helps you get directions to places I printed them out I had a notebook and a pen like this was before the days of like taking notes on your phone or whatever and so you know cell phones weren't like a big deal then well so um Let's see. So I printed out the, the, the address and I went to do my case. It was horrible. I did a story time on it. You have to listen to it. It was hilarious. Um, and so I became like, I was like a private investigator. And so everybody was like, what are you like? What's your real job going to be like? Great. Okay. You proved him wrong. Like you're, you're going to be a private investigator. Like, cool. Good job for you. What are you really going to do? And I'm like, no, like this is like, I'm going to make a job out of this. And they're like, no, that's not really a real job. That's not really something you do. And I'm like, yeah, huh? Like, <laughs> yes, I am. And so I was a private investigator, like from that point forward, like that's what I did. I didn't want another job. Like I quit my other job and I just became a full-time private investigator. I took the leap and I just, hi in Chicago. Um, I just took the leap and was like, all right, like you're going to learn to swim girl. So I quit my job, like this full-time job that I had that was a steady paycheck. And I went into private investigation, which was not a steady paycheck. Like you actually had to go to work to late and the schedule was weird. And sometimes you would work like a surveillance that was only like four hours and like that was your whole day. And so sometimes the paychecks were really crappy, but then other days they were really good. It just depends on the cases. So I, I've lived my life as a PI case by case because that's how you get paid is when you do your cases, right? So a lot of people think, oh, private investigator, and you can make really good money, right? But at first, it's a little questionable because nobody trusts you. You don't have any kind of track record. You have no credibility. You're just out here all willy-nilly, like just trying to get jobs, right? So anyways, um, so I, I work and I put my head down. I just went to work every single day and I busted my ass. Oh, Indiana, hi. Hi in Florida. Oh, so many friends. Um, so I, I busted my ass. Like I literally, like I got up early. I stayed late. I did. I went above and beyond to do a good job because I just feel like the harder you work, the hard, the more, the more reward you get. And I've always kind of had a really good work ethic. Right. So I, you know, went to work every day and I paid my dues. Okay. So I start doing surveillance and I like, I just became really good at surveillance over the next couple of years. Okay. So I'm good. Like if I lost somebody, which by the way, if you do surveillance, sometimes you lose your subject, right? Like you might be driving behind them and then somehow you just lose them. Like it happens literally all the time. It doesn't mean you're a bad private investigator. It's just, it's part of the job. It really is. Um, getting busted as part of the job. Well, I didn't know that. I just thought I was a bad PI because the way that she would yell at me when that happened. So when she was like, Hey, you need to go out on your own time and like do, you know, finish up the surveillance or whatever. And so that's what I did for years. I did so many hours of like surveillance where I did not get paid. I really just poked myself good in the eye. Um, 
I did hours of surveillance where I didn't get paid because I thought that's what you had to do as a private investigator. Like I thought, well, I messed up this case. So it's my job to go and, you know, make this up. Like I have to make this right for the client. And that's, I've always been all about like taking care of the people who are paying your paycheck. And that's the people who are hiring you to do the jobs. Right. So that was something that I was really super crazy about was like, I wanted to make sure that the clients were happy. So I always had a job. Okay. Cause this was like my full-time income. And if everybody was saying, no, what are you really going to do? You're not really going to be a PI. Right. And I was like, I, at this point I have to prove everybody wrong. So from the time I graduated college, it was up to me to prove everybody wrong that said I couldn't. Right. Breakfast. I love these. These are the only ones that I like that they're not super chalky. It's the premier protein from Sam's Club. Anyways, um, when I lose someone and I've been busted once this year. Okay, Chelsea, once is like better than a lot of people. So, um, and also I lost every single person I followed the first year as a private investigator. Cause when you follow someone, like if someone leaves, you get in your car and you're following right behind them. And sometimes they will turn right at a light and you will turn right, right behind them and they're gone, missing, vanished. You can't explain it. There's no explanation and you never get answers. You just don't know. And it happens all the time. It is literally part of the job. Then the second year I got made all the time. Cause I was like, I'm never gonna, um, I'm never gonna lose anybody again. So I would stay like right in their tailpipe and I always got busted. And then over a couple years, like you start to learn, you know, you start to learn the kind of happy median, happy, is it happy median or happy medium? And following me, happy median, happy medium. Anyways, um, happy in between. <laughs> so, um, y'all, I'm sorry if you're looking at boogers. I feel, I have such bad allergies and so I'm snotting all day. Sorry, <laughs> I'm gross. Um, so anyways, so this is what I did as a PI. Like this is how you get good, right? It's just, you, you just keep trying. Anyway, so now I'm this private investigator and this is what I have to do. So for five years, I kind of, I was really just, you know, working really hard. Happy medium. Thank you. So isn't, when you do math, isn't median like the average between something? I'm getting off track. I'm sorry, squirrel. Um, so anyways, I just kept being a PI and it's just like, I just got better and better at it. Okay. So now I'm a full-time private investigator. That's my job. And I noticed that not being the pretty girl, not being someone who is like really good looking or whatever. I am motherfucker. I need you in my, oh Lord. Okay. Bye-bye. Okay kiss your mother with that mouth. Anyways. Um, so now I'm a private investigator. I have this full-time job and I, you got to remember, I'm still in this mindset of I'm the fat, ugly girl, right? So as I continued to do surveillance, I found happiness in my car where the windows are limo tent, like super dark. And I was in my car by myself for hours at a time you know, doing nothing, like literally just like watching someone's mean is the average. Oh, this is getting too much like math. Okay. We're done with the math conversation. <laughs> Thank you guys for clearing that up. I appreciate you. Um, you learn something new every day. Um, so anyways, I became really comfortable doing surveillance in my car where I was by myself. I didn't have to dress up for anyone. I didn't have to put on, um, any kind of crazy, like, business casual outfit or like a suit and tie or anything to go into an office and have to wear shoes that like, you know, were uncomfortable. Like I could just wear whatever I want. I could literally wear my pajamas to work and it was fine. No one ever saw me. And I, I got so comfortable being in a place such as my dark car, double, double, double tent. No one ever saw me. If I had to follow someone into the store, I would just put my hoodie on and, you know, put on some sunglasses or whatever. And that's just, I got really good at being a private investigator. I got really good at surveillance because I really enjoyed hiding from the world. And now this isn't something I realized at that point. This is something I realized now years later. So as I'm on surveillance, like sometimes you, there's nothing you can do. Like you, you play Sudoku, like you play Candy Crush. And then when someone leaves, you follow them. It gets really boring. Like it's not so, the, being a private investigator is not something that's like all glamorous. Like you're sitting in a car, like trying to keep yourself awake. Like you're like, like just trying to stay, you're listening to podcasts and you're listening to music, right? So anyways, and then someone leaves and then you get this rush of adrenaline and then you follow them and you see where they go and then you get this video and usually it's like insurance fraud or, you know, a cheating spouse, whatever the case is. Mostly I did insurance fraud. So anyways, um, I would hide in my car and I got really good at hiding from the world. And then what would happen? I would go home and hide from the world some more in my house. 
So I didn't really like go out anywhere. Like I wasn't a big partier. Like that was what, what I got comfortable with was being in my car and then being at home. And that was my life. Okay. And then, I mean, I had friends, but like, I didn't like, I didn't, it's not a big partier. Like I just wanted to, I just wanted to be by myself and looking back on it, I can see why. But then I just thought, I was like, this is fine. You know, whatever. So fast forward five years into my career and I start like you, you do nothing but like play Candy Crush or whatever. I would chat with my girlfriends and one of my best friends, she's the one who does my press on nails. Like how cute those are little citrus, whatever. Um, that's nail junkie 615 on Instagram. If you want, um, if you want custom press on, she does a good job. Um, anyway, so I would chat with her on the phone and we would just like, she had a job where she could chat and I had a job where I could chat. And so we would just chat all the time and we both kind of, we really got into makeup and just like, this is when YouTube videos and like makeup videos started getting really big. And so I would sit in my car and I would video chat with my best friend and we, she would show me how to do like different eyeshadow looks. And we would talk about like, I was really good at the face stuff and contouring. She was really good with the eyeshadows. And so that's what we did. Like we spent hours a day just like chatting and then someone would come out and I'd be like, oh, gotta go. And like, I would, you know, go and chase him down or whatever. And that's what I did as a PI. And that was five years in and I started getting into makeup. So the next 10 years of being a PI, that's what I would do. Like I found like comfort and a little bit of, it would take away the boredom and it kind of brought out my creativity when I was doing makeup. So I would sit in my car and do makeup and that's just what I did. Now, mind you, no one ever saw me. I was still hiding in my car, but I became, yeah, they do. Not every layer. So like, it's just on the one layer, but yeah, all the palettes have mirrors. Um, so I would do makeup in my car. Well, over the next several years, I got really good at it and I would sit in my car, do my makeup, like a full face of glam makeup every day. And that just became something that I did. And even when I like, if, even if it was just me, no one else in the world would see me, but I would see me. And that's when I... Um, Trisha, about two weeks. If you, I find that if you prep them really good, like buff them and then do the alcohol wipes and then glue them, they stay much longer. But, um, if they pop off, you just like glue them back on. It's fine. Um, so anyways, I got really good at makeup and that's just something that made me feel really comfortable. And I just, I really liked, I began to like what I saw when I looked in the mirror, not before my makeup, only after the makeup. I forgot I'm working. Girl, you're going to get fired. <laughs> so I realized how much I really liked makeup because I just, I would look in the mirror and I would feel really pretty. And mind you, I'm at work doing surveillance, wearing sometimes pajamas, shorts and a t-shirt. Sometimes I forgot to walk out of the house with shoes. I would just go straight into the garage, into my car. Like it is so casual. And because I was the girl who never dressed up or whatever, like I was kind of sloppy looking. Like I was just, I, I didn't really care. Like I didn't want anybody to see me. I never saw anybody. So I didn't take much pride in like how I looked. I just got in my car where I was hiding. So I hid in my car doing surveillance for, I don't know how to do makeup. Oh girl, if you want to learn, I can help you. Uh, this, this shit makes it easy. <laughs> Sorry. Um, so I just got used to hiding in my car and that's just what I did. That's what I got used to. But then when I would put on my makeup, I'd be like, oh, I'm really good at this. So I'd watch the tutorials and I would do the makeup. And so I really, really got good at it to the point where I'm literally dressed like a slob, okay? Wearing like some beat up shorts with holes in them and a t-shirt that had holes in it, like oversized because I thought that I had to wear oversized clothes to be cute or whatever. So um, I, I wanted to hide my body but then a full face of glam makeup. And that was every day. But the makeup made me feel pretty. I used makeup as a mask, which I didn't realize until years later. Well, because I started getting better at makeup and then, you know, people would ask me, hey, can you do my, waiting for my whole to be done, can't forget to get in the pickup line. Um, <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, so, um, Anyway, so full slob, full face of glam makeup. And people started noticing that I was getting really good with makeup. They would ask me to do their makeup. And I'm like, really? Like me? Like you want me to do your makeup? And then I still didn't have any confidence in myself. Like, 
you know, I was still the ugly fat girl. Like I just kind of got good at makeup. So I was like, yeah, I guess. But I never felt confident in my skills in makeup. Like I did my own, which was great, but I don't care how somebody else looks in their makeup. Like if they think it's pretty, like what if I do it for them and then they don't think it's pretty or they don't feel confident in it. And that's what I wanted was for like, I wanted them to feel confident and I was just not, I didn't have the belief in myself. Well, so the more people ask me to do their makeup for like little events and stuff, I'm like, oh yeah, you know, I guess so, whatever. And so I, the more I did other people's makeup, the more I wanted to see how other people were doing makeup so that when people asked me to do theirs, I could do, I could do their, like, you know what, I would know how to do theirs instead of just mine. Cause now it's like, it doesn't matter. Like you just can't put your face of makeup on someone else. Like you have to do it based on their features and their whatever. And so I studied YouTube and I did all the tutorials and watched all the beautiful, like, um, the beautiful, um, what do you call them? Um, influencers online and they would do this makeup and I'm like, okay, I'm going to copy that. But they never showed you how, like they always did these really beautiful looks and they flew through it and whatever. They always told you the colors to use, but they never taught you how they never said, use this kind of brush because you'll get this kind of application and apply it like this and hold it like this. And then you use this kind of brush for this and you know, apply it like this. They always showed you what colors and what products, but they never taught you how. So I learned that on my own just by trial and error. Um, how long did it take you to do a full face? when I first started. So when I first started makeup, uh, like I would spend almost two hours to do a whole face and like I would do the liquid foundation. I would do layers and layers of all this stuff, right? So now for the next 10 years from the time, like five years into my PI career, I started playing with makeup. And for the next 10 years, I did makeup really well. Like my makeup looked flawless. Like I look back now and I'm like, Ooh. but it was good. Like it was really like, wow, like that's crazy good makeup. Like the technique and the application was good. Um, and so I just, I got really good at it. Like it was everybody, nobody ever complimented me for anything besides my makeup. And so that's what I got good at. I was like, they like the makeup. The compliments are coming because of the makeup. So I have to keep doing the makeup. So I continued to do the makeup. I continued to get better at the makeup. That was the only thing that I got compliments on was the makeup. And that was like, I mean, a full, like half of a duffel bag of like, brushes and liquid foundations and tubes and bottles and sticks and compacts and powders and like all this different stuff. And I had like, I was like a makeup, a legitimate makeup junkie. Okay. Like not even in the fun way. Like I was addicted to doing this makeup because I needed those compliments. Like I needed to feel something. And that's where I would get that good feedback from was the makeup. So I continued to do the makeup. So anyways, so as I continued to do the makeup, I was continuing to watch the tutorials and then several, like a couple years ago, like Instagram started picking up and TikTok and all the influencers were, you know, showing up on these, on these, uh, platforms or whatever. And this is when, um, Saint, the company that I sell the, the makeup company that I work for now, the direct sales company that I, I sell this makeup, um, they, the artist program started in 2017. And so right after that, I started noticing the women, like, I don't know if you've, if you've seen other Saint artists, but you know, we do the weird dots and all the different colors and then they blend it and it's like magic. And you're like, yeah, right. And so I would watch those videos and now mind you coming from watching the videos where all the women would do the, um, okay. You're what are you 13? Come on. Um, all these women would do this amazing makeup, but they wouldn't show you how. And so I noticed that all the, all the saint artists would put the makeup all over their face and they would blend it in and it was all the same, but they never showed you how. And so I was like, that's the dumbest thing I've ever seen. Like, there's no way that, cause they would do the transition. They would just do all the makeup and then all the makeup was blended. And I was like, that's impossible. Like that's stupid. So I said, I got to try that. Like, that's so dumb. I'm going to try it myself. Well, at the time, like, before Saint was Saint, it was mascara and it was mask Kara, like, because the founder's name is Kara Brooke. So Kara, C-A-R-A and then mascara. So mask, M-A-S-K, Kara. So it was kind of a play on words, but also the first word was mask. And I was like, you know, I thought, I think I had heard of it before then. And I was like, oh, that's clever. Um, anyways, so 
when I saw this company, I was like, okay, well, I thought it was affiliate marketing. Like, you know, those companies that are like, hey, we'll pay you like 15 cents or a dollar if you put on this makeup and post it, whatever. So I was like, all right, I didn't necessarily need the money, but it wouldn't suck to have like a second gig or like, you know, I was already doing stuff with makeup and people were already telling me you need to make makeup videos. Like you could do great. And I'm like, who's going to listen to the ugly fat girl? Who's going to listen to this girl who has no sense of style? I have no clue what's going on. I don't know what I'm doing. Like, I'm just kind of winging it. Like I've just been doing, I don't have any formal training. Like I literally don't know what I'm doing. And so I'm this private investigator working full time doing surveillance and, you know, playing with makeup. That's sort of what kept me busy during the day. Like that's what kept me like sitting on surveillance and keeping me awake while I'm doing these surveillances. So, um, I saw this makeup and I'm like, all right, I got to try that. Cause that's really dumb, right? Like, of, of course, cause, it, cause I'm me. And if you, if you're new here, like if I see something that's really stupid, I got to try it because that's just my personality, right? Like I, I can't turn down a challenge. Um, so anyways, I'm like, that's really stupid. I got to try it. And if I post this makeup and I make a couple dollars, then fine. Like if it really is, you know what it says. Well, so I signed up, I get home one night and this was last January. Okay. So by this time I had been playing with makeup for like 10 years. And so I see this makeup company and I see the girls and I'm like, that's so stupid. I have to try it. I sign up and it asked me for my social security number. Cause it's direct sales. Like you're a contractor, right? So, and I thought that was just so they could pay you if you actually make a post. Well, after I signed up and ordered the kit, I got the email that said, Hey, and you do this and whatever. And it was like, um, 12 95 a month. And they said, there's no, there's no sales minimums, no purchase minimums. Like it's just $12.95 a month and you can be a part of this program or whatever. And I'm like, all right, that's fine. And if they don't, if I don't like it, then I was just going to like cancel because that's what you do, right? Like you're like, yeah, I'll take it and then I'll just cancel it because I'm going to stick it to the man and get this whole kit of makeup. Well, I couldn't afford the whole big kit, but I wanted the whole big kit because I was doing makeup for other people. So the kit was like $400 and I used Klarna and it split my payments up. So I was able to pay like $100 every two weeks for this kit, whatever. Well, so I get this makeup and that day when I signed up and I get the email and I'm reading it and I'm like, oh crap. So I run downstairs and I tell my husband, I think I just signed up for a pyramid scheme. Uh, I'm not selling this shit. I just want you to know I'm not selling this. I just like, don't be worried. Like I, I just letting you know, like, don't worry. I'm not going to sell it. I just wanted, I just wanted to get the makeup. And so he's like, well, why not sell it? Like, what's the big deal? And I'm like, I don't want to sell stuff like that. That's gross. Like no one wants to do direct sales. Like that's disgusting. Social, social selling. That's like where they message you and go, Hey girl, you want to join my team? Want to join, join my team? Want to buy my makeup? Want to do my thing? Want to sign up for this? And both, and that's so annoying. I was like, I'm not doing that. He's like, so don't like, he's like, just get the makeup. See if you even like it. I'm like, all right. So I get my makeup in the mail and I'm like, this is trash. Like this is stupid. Threw my palette away. I said, this is dumb. Um... Yeah, Snow Quilter, did the amount of time it took you to do a full face change much when you put aside all the liquid foundation? This makeup, I can do in three minutes because everything is just so fast. Boom, boom. Obviously, like, that's without eyeshadow. If I add eyeshadow, like, I can do a whole face with eyeshadow in ten minutes. Um, And so, anyway, so I get this makeup knowing that I had signed up for a pyramid scheme, which I was like, I'm definitely returning all this shit. Threw my first palette away. I was like, this is dumb because I wanted to hate it. Like I wanted, there was no way that a direct sales company was going to get me. Like I'm going to stick it to the man first. So I threw it away. I was like, I'm not doing this. And then I was like, wait, I can return that. So I pulled it up out of the trash and I'm like, well, let me try it again. So then I tried a different color because I, in the big artist kit. Now, mind you, I hadn't been color matched. I didn't sign up under like a mentor or like an upline or anything like that. Like I signed up under corporate. I had no one, no leadership, no guidance, no nothing. I never talked to anybody about it. I just signed up. Okay, through the company itself, which is, is kind of cool. Like, you don't have to sign up through an upline if you don't want to. Um, anyway, so I'm now I'm now I have this makeup that I think is dumb. I threw my palette away three times because I couldn't get it to blend right. It's it's not the same as liquid. Like, you don't need as much. And so I was trying to put on, like, all this makeup, and you just don't need as much. Like, you need very, very little because a little bit goes a really long way because it's really pigmented. So with the cream, that's what's different about the cream. Well, I didn't know that. I just thought it was, like, some gimmicky thing. Duchess, quit scratching me. I got her a little couch bed for my dog and she don't fit in it. She big, she big baby. She, that's a big dog. She a big lap, back, lap, back labradoodle, black lab. Um, anyways, so I threw my palette away. I thought it was so stupid. I tried the different colors and it took me a minute to get used to. Now, mind you, I've been doing makeup for 10 years at this point, doing other people's makeup. I am perfect 
perfecting my makeup skills in every aspect. I learned about contour, highlight, eyeshadow, placement, like brushes, all the things, right, over these last 10 years of doing surveillance in my car, right? So how do I get matched to this dumb makeup? <laughs> it's so dumb. Don't get a color match. I'll actually... On Facebook, you can pin a link. I wish you could do that here. Um, you can just text me. I can help you. Um, so anyways, so that's my phone. That's not a robot, by the way, you guys. When you text me, it comes directly to me. And then I just match you. And then you build a palette and do whatever you want. Um, so anyways, so I think this makeup is stupid. I got it, threw my palette away. And I was like, gosh, it, it says in the thing, if I want to return it, they'll they'll refund me like the amount of the return or like whatever. Like I can totally just return it. And so I'm thinking about it, and then I think, I'm like, okay, all these people are telling me, you got to make videos, you got to make videos. So I said, okay, screw it, F it, right? Let's make a video. Let's see. And so I sat down for a couple of hours, and I played with my makeup, and I put it in a palette, and I'm creating all these things, and I'm like, what are these? Now, mind you, I had just seen a couple videos. Like, I didn't go in, into, like, a deep, dark rabbit hole. I just bought the freaking makeup because I just, I just jumped, right? Like, that's my personality. It's just so sporadic. I just jumped. So, mind you, I'm doing full-time private investigation still. I'm doing full-time surveillance. Then at night I would come home and I would like play with my makeup a little bit. So, oh, send it over to me. Just text me. I'm happy to help. Um, so anyways, I, your throat is beautiful. Oh boy. Well, that's one I haven't gotten before. Bye bye. <laughs> bye bye. Okay. So, um, so anyways, everybody said you need to make videos. Like you could really teach people how to do makeup from what you've learned over the last 10 years. So I'm like, all right, let me make a video. Like, let's just, let's throw spaghetti at the wall. Like, let's just go nuts, right? And can't say long, I'm actually working. Oh, you guys, that's Nail Junkie 615. She's the one who does my, my custom press-ons. So if you want nails from her, go get nails. Like, she will literally do any shape, any length, any style. She can put your husband's face. I have some that she did with my husband's face on them. It's hilarious. Um, anyways, so that's where you get your Nail Junkie 615. Um, yay. I'm so glad you're here. Hi, Tiffany. Um, oh, hey, Jen. It's good to see you too. Um, so anyway, so everybody said you need to do videos and I'm like, all right, all right, we're going to, let's just go, let's just say for the, I mean, for the sake of Pete, we're going to do a video. So I got on my, th on my video camera on my little phone and I did a 17 long minute video about my makeup. And I put it on and I was like, oh my God, I'm one of them. Oh my God. Like, I can't believe I'm doing this. So I put on the makeup. I did a video and I explained, this is how this makeup works. Cause mind you, I've learned over the last 10 years how to perfect makeup. So when I'm doing this makeup, I'm showing these are not the products you're used to, but the application is the same. So I'm teaching the application that I know that I have perfected just with a different kind of makeup. And I did a video. And I had like nine followers and like maybe 71 friends on Facebook, okay? So um, I did this video and a couple people asked me, they were like, what's that? And I was like, well, it's this makeup. And they're like, I want to try it. And I'm like, you do? It's dumb. Like, this is dumb, mate. Like, this is stupid, right? Like, you don't think this is dumb? No. Well, my very first customer, her name is Karen. She's one of my best friends of like of all time for years and years. And I put the makeup on her and she's like, I don't like it. She's like, it makes my face feel oily. Right. So I was like, really? And she's, I think she's someone who struggles with her skin already. And like, she wants to, um, you know, she wants to try different products, but she didn't care how it felt on her skin. Well, I didn't realize when I first started, I was putting too much on her, on myself, on everyone. And if you put too much, it's going to be oily. So I learned how to use less. Anyways, um, yeah, my Instagram is good now. So thank you. Um, why do you guys look so, oh, you're so sweet. You guys are so kind. Thank you for your kindness. That really goes a long way. Um, so anyways, so I put it on my friend. She didn't like it, but some of my other friends were like, Hey, I'll do a party for you. And it was my friend Krista. And she's like, and I'm like, what's a party? Like, what do you mean? And she's someone who never buys, or she, I don't think she's ever done direct sales, but she buys from direct sales, like Sensi, um, Manat. Um, what are the other ones? Like the weight loss supplements and Plexus and all this stuff, right? So she's not afraid to, like, she knows how parties work. Well, I didn't. So she's like, I'll have a party for you. And I'm like, what's that? And she's like, you just set it up on Facebook and you do all these things. And I'm like, oh, okay. So I set up a Facebook party. Now, mind you, I signed up by myself with no upline. Like I had like, no one was going to earn money off of me. Like I'm direct to corporate, but I also had like no guidance on anything. So I had no clue what was going on. So I, I set up this, I did a lot of research. I'm in the same artist group and I'm looking up all these things. Right. And Oh, your bestie is Krista. 
Is it? Oh, I wonder if it's my Krista because she spells it with a K too. Anyway, so um, so anyway, she's like, I'll do this party for you, and I'm researching like how do you do a freaking party. So I, I used to use brushes, but felt it caused act. Um, Christine, that's a good question. Just every other day or so, we have an antibacterial instant dry spray. So you spray it, swirly whirl on a washcloth, instantly dry, instantly clean, antibacterial. So definitely recommend. It keeps your it, your your skin will thank you. Um, my skin is sensitive. Does it use clean ingredients? Yeah. So there's only 11 ingredients and I think they are labeled clean. Um, one of the main ingredients is beeswax, which is notorious to be like great for skin. So definitely, um, try it. Uh, older. Diana, I just did my mother-in-law's makeup. Did you see that tutorial? You have to check it out. It's like a couple posts down. I just did it the other day. Um, but it's, it's great for mature skin. Like it's the, if you're over 30, you need to wear cream because it doesn't settle and crease and cake and all that stuff. Anyway. So, um, where was I at? Oh, so I did this video. I did this, um, this party. Nobody commented on not one single thing in this party. There was no comment. There was no likes. There was no nothing. Now I hadn't shown up. Like I just shown up like once or twice. Like nobody knows. Nobody saw my face. Nobody like you. There's no trust built with anybody. Like I'm just here all willy nilly, like all randomly like, Hey, you want to try this makeup that I've never tried before? <laughs> so nobody commented. And so I was like, all right, that was cool. I get the hang of it. So then I tried doing more and I was like, I guess like this is what you do is parties. And by this point I'm learning the makeup and I'm really liking it. Right. So what if you're over 55? Yeah. My, um, my mother-in-law is 68 and I just did hers. You, you have to go look at it. It doesn't, that's, what's great about this. It's, it's so pigmented. You use so little, there's, there's not enough. It won't, it won't settle or cake into lines and wrinkles. Like it just kind of work. It kind of creates like a second skin. Um, Anyway, so, oh, and also you can see it, if you go to my, my beauty group, um, it's on Facebook, it's called Freedom in Beauty VIP, make sure you type in VIP, that's the group, uh, Freedom in Beauty VIP, I do lots of tutorials there, and there's a lot of customers I have there that are over, um, 55, they're, you know, more mature skin, they'll tell you also, no, it was a Facebook thing, so I did a Facebook party, and um, nobody commented. Nobody did anything. I didn't know you could do like in-person ones. I didn't do those till later. And even then I messed it up. Um, anyway, so <laughs> mimosas. Um, so then I did another Facebook party with other people who were like, okay, I'll try it. And now I'm like, hey, do you want to have a party? Now, mind you, in direct sales, I hated direct sales because, which I still don't like some of them um, because I don't, I don't like some of the aspects of them. But now I know that like in direct sales, this is what you do. So just so innocently... I would say, hey, would you, you know, do you want to have like a party, I guess? Like, that's what you do. So I did like five parties on Facebook. Nobody commented at all. Like, I am like, I don't know why people like being in direct sales. This is awful. And so I just, but I just kept showing up. I kept doing the videos and I was like, okay, well, I'm just going to keep doing videos, I guess. Like, I wasn't, I think, I think it was great because I wasn't stressed about the money. I didn't care about the paycheck. I didn't need the money. I was just doing it for funsies at this point because I, I was and I would like to add that before January of last year, I was in a depression. I was bored. When you're a private investigator, there's no, you don't get accolades. You don't get like, hey, good job. Or here's a promotion. Like you can just like charge more. The more, like the more experience you have as a PI, you can just charge more. That's literally it. You can't like, there's no, there's no, there's no like good job. There's no re awards or recognition. You just, you just can charge a little bit more. That's literally it. So I, um, so it was kind of cool to like, like I would come home and color in one of those stress-free coloring books, you know, and like those adult coloring books. And that's what I did to kind of keep my mind occupied was I would do that or I would play games on my phone. Not really a, uh, a TV girl. Like I can't, I just, I needed to be doing something because I was so depressed and so bored. And so this kind of gave me something to do. So I hate to admit that, but this was something to do for me. So I just kept showing up. Like, I didn't give a shit. I wasn't desperate for money. And so I think that kind of really helped. Um, but so I just kept doing the parties. And then after my fifth party, now mind you, I don't have an upline. I don't have a mentor. I don't have guidance, leadership, anything, right? I was just like, all right, like I just can't. Oh, Frank, I love you so much. Footloose Frank, you guys I've known since I was like a little girl. He's a good friend of my mom's and he has just been in my life forever. So I, I love him. Uh, so I had, the next party I had was, oh gosh, how did I even get connected to her? I don't even know, but somebody saw something that saw somebody that saw something. And she said, I'll have a party. And I was like, all right, cool. I think it was a color, it was a color street girl. 
And so um, she was like, I'll do a party for you. And I was like, all right. And so I was not expecting anything because my parties were like, Pfft. Then so I was like, all right, I guess this is what you do is just keep you having parties. And so like my sixth party, I like, and at this point, mind you, I didn't, I, I wasn't being cringy because like I just, I literally didn't know that if I was being cringy, I had no idea because I didn't know what I was doing. And I had like $3,000 in sales and I had like two artists sign up and I was like, what? Don't sign up under me. Like, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't, please don't like I, you want to sign up under me as an artist? Please don't. Like, I have no clue what's going on. Like, don't count on me. I don't, I'm not going to teach you anything. Like, good freaking luck. Like, you're going to be a fish out of water because I have no clue what's going on. So from that point forward, like I was like, I, I, I really don't know what I'm doing. So then I was like, well, I guess I should learn because now these people want to sign up under me, right? These people I didn't even know. And they were like, I want to do what you do. And I'm like, really? Like, please don't. And they were buying makeup from me. Well, with the makeup sales comes color matching. I'd never done a color match in my life. Like I have no clue what's going on. Well, I had made a couple of friends and like during my research, I would do like, I would go into the Facebook groups. So I was like, hey, how do I color match? Can someone help me color match? Well, then I had like, I had like 30 color matches or something in that one party and I'm like, holy crap, I don't know what to do. So I found this woman that had been in my inbox and she was really helping me through it. And you know, th for the last couple months, like she would answer some questions here and there. And I told her what was going on and she's like, you really should like, if you, if you want to move under me, like you'll have my team's resources or whatever. And I didn't want to, like, I was like, no, I don't want to join a team. Like I don't want anybody making money off of me and I hate direct sales and it's so scammy and schemy or whatever. And so mind you, I'm still doing surveillance full time, like private investigation full time. So I have that going on. Then I would come home and work this business. Right. And so I was like, all right, well, so I was like, I guess I'll join your team because I really need help color matching. And everyone else was like, everyone else was like, no, I'm not like, you know, you're, you're on your own. Like no one wanted to help you if you weren't on their team or whatever. So I was like, I guess I really need to join a team because I really need resources. I had no idea what I was doing, like, but I was doing pretty good up to this point. Right. But I needed, I can't color match on my own. I didn't know what I was doing. Um, now, by the way, if you, when you're on like my, like my team, for instance, we have a color match telegram thread together. And so we all help each other color match. So now there's like resources that I make sure to provide because I didn't have that. So I want to make sure my team has everything that I didn't have. Um, so anyways, so I joined this team. She gives me all the help. These girls sign up underneath me and I have all these sales and I was like, wow, that was kind of satisfying. And so it was like, there's no like, I like my, I had a nice paycheck and I was like, I wasn't even in it for the money, but that's pretty good. Like this is a pretty good comp plan or whatever they call it. So then I was like, all right, well, I guess I like, I could do that again. Like that'd be kind of cool. So I did another party and like little by little, I started getting comfortable with the videos. And then I was like, let me make another video. So then I was like, well, how do you make a reel? I don't know how to make a freaking reel. And like the team I signed up under, they weren't social media girls. Like they didn't know how to make a damn reel. So I go on Instagram and I'm like, what does this button do? Oh no, that's wrong. What does this button do? And so I learned how to create reels just by doing it. Well, so fast forward, the company had said, Hey, from May to October, if you make this much in sales, I think it was $6,000 a month in sales, you're going to earn a trip to Mexico. And I was like, well, I can't do that. Number one, I work full time as a private investigator. I don't have time. So like I have to do surveillance, like I could do content. And so I would go in my car and I would create videos while I was on surveillance. And that's what I did. And so that earned me a lot of money. Like people wanted to, you know, they wanted to buy the makeup. And I was like, this is so cool. Like I could do surveillance and sell makeup. And it, I, I'll be honest with you. I think a lot of my success in the beginning came from the fact that there was literally no, like I had no connection to it. Like I was like, if you want to wear makeup, fine. If not, I really don't give a shit. Like, but this makeup's pretty cool. So whatever. And so I would just, people would come along on my surveillances. And I think that was really interesting because nobody else does, who, there's nobody else that's a PI that does, you know, their makeup and do surveillance. So I thought it was kind of like very, it was very, very niche. And so, um, the company said you can earn this trip and I'm like, well, there's no way I can sell $6,000 a month. Like there's no freaking way. But then because I'm me, I was like, I'm going to earn that freaking trip. <laughs> and so I busted ass. I like after surveillance, like, I, so I would do my surveillance and then I would come home and then I would go live in my, in my beauty group and in my Facebook and in my Instagram. And I would just create these videos. Now, mind you, when I was doing reels, I was copying all the other saint artists. Like I wanted to, when they would do a voiceover, I would do a voiceover. If they used a certain trending sound, I would use that sound. And so I was, I was emulating them. Like I was straight up copying them for months because I was like, they're doing really well. Like they're getting all these views. So that's what I'm going to do. So I was taking what these other Saint artists were doing and just like basically just copying them. And I did that for 
So from the, the, to earn the trip, it was from May to October. Now I signed up in January and I had my first like really good sales in like February from that party. And March I signed up under, um, under, a, like this team or whatever. And then in, from there I had the resources. So then I had like, I knew that if I just worked hard, like the way that I did that first month that I could do it again. And because I was still doing private investigation full time, I didn't need the money. Like our family is happy. Like we were in a good place with my, with my income. Right. So I have too many kids, girl. I just, I made it part of my day. Um, so anyways, so I kept showing up and I was like, I'm going to earn this freaking trip because it's me. And like, I'm so competitive. So I was like, I'm going to earn that damn trip one way or another. And so for months I copied the other, the other saint artists and what they were doing and the sounds that they were using. And I was like, I still was only at like, I don't know, 300 followers on Instagram. Like I didn't have a big following. I was just busting ass. Like I was just doing live videos and doing parties. Like at this point I'm like, do you want to have a party? Do you want to have a party? Do you want to have a party? And I would do like eight, nine parties a week. Don't ask me how I did it, but my husband was like really supportive. He was like, go do a lot, go do your live, babe. Like if you want to do a live in your beauty group or whatever, I'll take care of dinner. And he helped me take care of dinner. And then he would help me with my son and he'd be like, you know, well, I'll take care of dinner and I'll do the dishes so that you can go give Ryan a bath and snuggle with him before bed. And then after Ryan went to bed, I would go back to my bedroom, back to my vanity and I would sit down and I would create five, six, seven reels. And I would just batch my content based on what the other artists were doing. And I really taught myself how to get in it and how to do the damn thing and how to sell the freaking makeup. Because at this point, I was going to earn this trip, but I was also like, if I don't earn this, I will hate myself. So should I go for it? Because if I don't earn it, I'm going to, I'm going to be pissed. Like I'm going to be so resentful. So I had to earn this trip. And so I was like, screw it. And I did this, like, um, I just, I don't know. Like I just, it, I just went balls to the wall and I was like showing up every single day. And I made it a point to get my face on this freaking screen consistently every single day. And within the, like the first two or three months in the very first woman who told me I've never felt so pretty or my makeup has never been easier or my husband is noticing me or I'm starting to get all these compliments. And I would just be like, really? And so that just brought out so much inspiration in me. And I was like, for once in my life, for once in my life, like I'm changing someone's life. Like I'm not sitting in a dark car. Well, I was still doing surveillance and like it's a dark car, but now I'm helping women, which I never thought I could do because I was the ugly fat girl. How could I ever inspire women? Like I was the ugly girl, right? So anyways, um, so I ended up, I just kept showing up. I earned the trip to Mexico. I had like, I broke my team sales record and everything. Well, after I earned the trip to Mexico, I was like, or no, I was, I was like one month shy of earning the trip. And I was like, okay, like I can do this. Right. So, and the way I showed up was just, I was like, I'm going to do what nobody else is doing. I'm going to actually teach how to apply the makeup, not actually show up and just do the makeup. So that's what I did. And I think a lot of women like, you know, responded to that. So, um, right before there was a month before I earned the trip to Mexico and I said, what can I do differently? I'm doing what everybody else is doing. What can I do? That's me. And so I took this job as a private investigator where my college professor told me you'll never make it in that industry because you're a girl and that's a man's industry. And I was like, hmm, hide and watch. Okay. So, um, I, I, because he said that though, I was like in this belief system that I shouldn't be doing private investigation because that like I was a girl and then getting into this industry where it was focused on women. And so now I'm like, I'm going to empower these women. I will never again feel like my power as a woman is taken away from me. And I'm by no means a feminist, but I do believe that women need to be empowered and we're so quick to shut, like cut each other down. Um, and so I just, how long have you been an artist? Oh, since last January. Um, so I, just over a year and a half. Um, so I wanted to inspire women. And when women would say, I've never felt so beautiful or I've never, you know, whatever that inspired so much in me that from that point forward, I could not stop. And so in September, that was one year ago was when I made that first PI video because no one else was doing PI videos. And I was like, well, this will set me apart. Let's see what happens. So I showed up. And I, I don't know how long this live has been. It'll probably cut me off soon. I think it's an hour. Um, anyway, so I said, I'm just going to keep showing up. Well, then that video didn't go viral, not right away. And people would watch it. I got a good response from it. And I was like, oh, that's cool. And I had like, you know, I went up from like 300 to 500 followers maybe. And so I was like, all right, well, I didn't want to be like this huge, like 
internet superstar, but I thought it'd be really cool and it would probably help sales if like I had some whatever. So I showed up every single day. Then I showed up every week telling a different PI story about my job and really incorporating what I had done as a private investigator where I had no belief and incorporating it into what I was doing to inspire women, to give them belief that I didn't have. And in doing so, they inspired me back. So it was this big circle of like, the when I started giving to people, I started getting. And so it was like, wow. Like, And the Lord tells you that too. Like when I'm a Christian girl and you know I grew up in the church and God says you got to give to get you know give and it shall be given to you and so that's like what I was like the more I gave the more I served women the more I got and so I kept I continued to show up and so they just gave me like this whole like slew of like confidence in serving women and so um so I did my PI stories didn't go viral whatever the next month I worked my ass off and I stressed myself out so bad trying to earn that stupid trip because it was the last month it was the last chance I had to do it and so when I earned it about 10 days before the end of the month I was like I was so relieved and then I started getting like really bad headaches so I was getting tension headaches and I literally gave myself tension like a hypertension or whatever not hypertension I never had high blood pressure but whatever anyway so November and December tanked. I was like, I give up. I could never work that hard again. Like I worked so hard. I busted my ass to earn that trip. That was so hard. November and December, I sold maybe $2,000 and that was just from reorders. I didn't show up. And then in January, I, I kept showing up, but not with the spirit that I had before, not with that, that, you know, empowerment spirit that I had before of like helping women. Cause I was so burned out. Well, in January, I went to my husband's birthday dinner. His birthday is January 23rd. I went to his birthday dinner. We took him to Sonny's. And that day, like right before we got to the place, I noticed that one of my videos had gone viral. Okay. And this is, I did that first PI video in September and just kept making videos after that. So September, October, November, December. So for four months, I had these PI videos. January, take my husband to dinner at Sonny's. And right before we showed up, I noticed one of my videos was going viral. I was like, wow, I'm getting some followers. Yay, I have a viral video. Like, that's cool. And then by the, I had, I think like 923 followers or something. By the time we left that dinner a couple hours later, I had 40,000 followers. Because what had happened was I showed up with one PI story and then not, not like that one went viral and then. Or no, that one didn't go viral. Another, I don't remember which one went viral, but because they watched one, now they had to watch the others. So I had created something that people wanted to hear and it was something that I never had belief in because that professor told me I could never make it because I was a girl. So it was something that I never had belief in, but because I shared it with others, I shared something that I was so terrified of with others and they loved it. And I was like, you guys think these stories are funny? Like, I, I thought they were kind of dumb. That's why everybody's told me, like, you need to tell these stories. And I'm like, who's going to care? Like, no one's going to care about these stupid PI stories. They're dumb. Like, for me, it's just another day in the office. But if you're not a private investigator, like, you don't, like, this stuff is interesting, I guess, right? And so from that point forward, like, every video that I put out, because once you watch one, you got to watch the rest. And it took off. And I was like, it's kind of genius, <laughs> right? And so... After, so in January to now, like I've been a top seller in the company. Like I have this, like this great, I've had this great opportunity to share with women, you know, this makeup, right? All because of something I never believed in to begin with. I never believed in myself. I never believed in the stupid makeup. I never believed in any of that. And so I thought that was really interesting. And not that you don't like have to go viral to be successful, right? Like success is for you. And I feel like everybody has their own different level of success. Like success looks different for everyone. But I will say that for someone who had no belief and no inspiration to just kind of jump in was a big deal. Like that was kind of big, right? And what's cool about it is that, um, yeah, I, well, I try to make it wholesome because like there's so much crap on the internet, you know, you want to make it like not so like a true crime light. We like to call it on the dating detectives. Um, so anyways, I wanted to, I wanted to, sh now I had this like platform and so now it's like, I'm going to show up for women who are not, who don't have the inspiration. I didn't have the inspiration, but now I do because these women have given it to me. So now I'm going to share that. And so when you, 
when you share what you don't have, like when you give first, you get back and you might not get it back in the way that you think, but it comes back to you. And so anyways, so now I'm a private investigator and a direct seller. So first being a PI as a girl is like, has a stigma, right? But like when you, people are like, oh, you just like tell on everybody. Like you're a snitch, right? It's called a snitch. It's like, these people are stealing from you. Like your insurance rates are high because these people are stealing from you. Like this insurance fraud or whatever, not to mention the cheaters, the liars, the scandals, the, you know, baby mama drama and all this stuff. So that's like a, that's a whole big thing, right? Like that's a lot. Like I do, like I do some good stuff out here. Like this isn't just like snitching on people. Anyways, that's, you know, controversial in that way. But then direct sales, Ugh. who wants to do direct sales? Anyway, so because I took a chance and because, because I took a chance on myself and really like put myself out there for others, now it's giving, given me a platform where I can continue to do that. So, oh, thank you, Lizzie. You're so sweet. Um, so anyways, I just, I, I guess I hope that my story kind of inspires you, whether you're in direct sales or whether you're in insurance or whether, whatever business you're in, medical, whatever, um, show, keep showing up for others because it's a, it's a really, it's a really big deal. And also I get a lot of questions because people are like, a lot of people in direct sales are afraid to like, you get a lot of those, those spammy, like, Hey girl, join my team or Hey girl, whatever. For me, like, I just feel like, because I know what this has done for me, like I've, I have no more depression. I've lost a ton of weight. I have more confidence in myself. I have belief in myself and I'm able to share that with my team of artists. And I feel like God has really given me this platform because he knows that like, I will continue to try and inspire others because I was not inspired. So anyways, um, I'm not someone who will, and I'm a top recruiter in this company. I haven't recruited one person. Like I tell people, I'm like, you need to be an artist. Like you have no idea. There's women that are older that are like, I really love my makeup. And I'm like, why don't you be an artist? And they're like, I could never like I'm older. Do you know how many older women I have on my team? 50s, 60s, 70s on, on my team of artists that are thriving. They're doing well because you never know. There's a woman just like you out there who needs to be inspired by a woman just like her. And you could be that one person, but because you're scared or you're afraid to put yourself out there, they're not being inspired. So it's like, show up because you never know who you could inspire. And so for me, like, I think it was, I know that um, Saint was in store, like it was e-commerce for a while, but I feel like the company tried to like, they, they wanted to obviously use cheaper ingredients and sell for more, like Sephora, Ulta, and Kara was like, nope, I wanna keep it the same. So she's like, I guess we'll make it direct sales. Like, you know, I don't wanna do that because direct sales are gross. And it's like, girl, you own the company, like do whatever you want with it. So she took out all the gross, and I was like $12.95 a month, right, is what I pay. I pay $12.95 a month to be an artist. That's it. I don't have to make sales. I don't have to build a team if I don't want to. The opportunity is just there, which I think is really cool. So if you're someone who is not, yeah, there's, I have Canadian artists too. And I have customers in Canada, just not Quebec. I don't know what y'all got going on in Quebec. It's wild, but whatever. Um, but anyway, so for tw like $13 a month is what I pay to be an artist. And they take care of all the customer service, all the shipping, all the everything. So basically, if you are someone who is not inspired or not inspired or feel like you are not inspiring to others, I'm telling you, first of all, if you need confidence and you're someone who's scared of makeup, try this one. You can get color match for free. My phone number's right there. Just text me. I will color match you. It's not a robot. It comes to me directly. I will literally text you back and like color match you, whatever. Um, yeah, you get an, you get a, you get a discount as a Saint artist, but what we do, it, I get it back in commissions. Like you can take the 20% off the top or you can like get commissions. And then when you make more sales, you can earn. So if I buy my own makeup, I get 40% off because I take it back in commissions and I always hit that 40% bracket. So there's different brackets. Like you can earn 20% commission up to 40%, but there's like, what she did was she took all the crap out of direct sales. So like there's no minimum sales or purchases necessary or whatever. You can literally just buy your kit, whatever kit you want, the small, medium or large one. I think the, the, the small one is like $99. So if you already have the makeup, just get the $99 one. Um, and then that's it. Like you're an artist. Like you, you can make commissions right away. You don't have to build a team. You can, you don't have to make sales. You can. And if you're a customer and you hate the direct sales model, you can buy directly from the company. Like literally, I think that's, I think that's what I like about this company is it's not, it doesn't have the gross factor of direct sales. I've never reached out to one person and been like, Hey girl, would you like to join my team? Like, Hey girl, would you like to buy makeup? It's just very like, 
it's just something that's, I, I try to inspire women, but I, I don't like the grossness of it. Like I, ooh, I hate direct sales so much. I don't want to be that girl. Um, but if, if you are someone who it does not feel inspired, this will inspire you. And what's cool also is that like, you know how there's some companies where they're like, if you want to purchase from us, you need to sign up as a subscriber. Blah, blah, blah. And like Saint doesn't make you do that. You don't have to buy a set of anything. This is everything from Saint is individual. So you can buy one shade or you can buy a million. Like it's totally up to you. You build your own palette. There's different sizes, different colors, different whatever. They've really made it so friendly to the consumer, to the artist, to everyone. And it is amazing. So from being someone who goes like being in a surveillance vehicle, hiding, wearing makeup as a mask to now I found this makeup, which just, I feel like enhances my features. It makes me feel really pretty and I can share it with other women. And I think that like having this platform really helps me to inspire other women. And so you will see me all the time, every day showing up with this stupid makeup that I thought was so dumb. And this opportunity that like has, I don't do surveillance anymore. Like, I mean, I do, but like, this is my full-time job now, now being a PI is like, you know, kind of a side gig now because I just, I have so much focus here. Um, oh, Rebecca, it's, you'll learn it in a day. Like that's what I'm for is to help you. Yes, this is great for teenagers because it's so, it's so light. And I really think that as teenagers, like we're really, we want to do all the contouring and the highlight and everything. But I, for me, when I, when I do, when I build a palette for like a teenager, it usually has like just a foundation shade, maybe a little illuminator, or lip and cheek or something like that. But it's not like the super heavy makeup that, you know, they're inspired to wear by watching like YouTubers or whatever. So it's great for teenagers just because it teaches them less is more. Um, yeah. You know what? That's funny because the enthusiasm is like, I watch some people online and like they, they want to show the makeup so mad, but so badly, but they're like, okay, you do your makeup like this and you put this here and I'm like, girl, push it up a little bit. Like let's get some spirit. <laughs> And I'm like, you got to show up with a smile. And it's that confidence that, I mean, and little by little that grows. Like, it's hard to show up online for a lot of people. I'm a ham. So, like, I'll show up. There's a camera. I'm smiling. A lot of people are like, oh, there's a camera. No. Um, so, it does take a certain personality, I guess. But also, there's a lot of successful saint artists here that have no social media whatsoever. And so, I think it's like, you know, it's just what you want to do. And I think that's why I like Saint so much is that like, there's a lot of customers that I talk to that are single moms. And they're like, I, you know, I just, when they sign up as an artist, they're like, I really hope this works. Cause I could use a couple extra hundred dollars or whatever. And what, if you want to make 50 extra dollars a month, I got you. If you want to, I have an artist right now that I'm working with. She wants to replace her income as a hairdresser and just do Saint. And she's a couple months in and she's halfway there. Like she's almost there. Like she's going to, I think she's going to hit her goal to do that by January. And I just by doing the work, just by like showing up in the way that feels genuine to her. And I think that's so cool. I've replaced my income and well, I've replaced my, <laughs> I did pretty well. Um, and so I think that it's, it's a lot of work, but it's good because that the payoff is when you talk to the women and they say, I feel so beautiful. So anyways, I guess that's my, that's my spiel. Um, I can color match for outside of the U S and Canada, but we only ship to the U S and Canada. I think if you do, um, anything, if you're outside of the U S and Canada, you'd have to get like a shipping service. I think that's what my customers over there do. I'm not really sure. Is it hypoallergenic? I don't think it's labeled hypoallergenic because that's not FDA regulated, but I think it, um, it's not FDA regulated. So I can't say that. <laughs> Do any of your team members do online videos? Yeah, they get, um, they, they're online. They show up. They do. And I've actually, we had a retreat this past weekend at a lake house in South Carolina. Some of my team earned a retreat. And there was 15 of us. And we were working on, like, I was showing them how to do, like, different reels and things like that. So they really enjoyed that. But, yeah, they like showing up online. Are you teaching people how to sell like you? Yeah, you know, the biggest thing that I teach my team, first of all, is, um, I'm going to start videos soon and I'm on Mackenzie's team. Yeah, girl. 
Jen's one of my artists. Um, yeah, so one thing that I like to do is I like to encourage my team to show up to what's genuine to them. So you can only be consistent with what's true to you, right? Because otherwise it's not sustainable. Like you could totally pretend to be someone else, but how long is that going to last? So if I show up and I am on here telling you my PI stories, that's going to last a while. It's sustainable because that's all I got. Like that, that's me. So all I can do is give you me and that's never going to run out. So as long as you're consistent, like I always tell them like, do something that's consistent. Like for me, consistent is showing up at least once a day on my social media, connecting with my customers and serving my customers, providing them the customer service that they're not going to get anywhere else. Like my, I don't know about other St. Artists, but I provide customer service that I like, uh, I get customers, I provide customer service that I feel women deserve and that they need because makeup is already hard. So I want to make everything else easy. Um, are you still under the same team or have you bypassed her? Just curious not to be nosy. Um, I'm no, once you're under, once you sign up under a certain artist, you can never, ever, ever, ever change. You'd have to quit and then come back six months later and you can sign up under someone else. But so I'm still under the same team. Um, I think that the, but you're not required, like I get my mentorship from other artists and other leaders as well. Like you're never stuck, like you know, under, like, you will never just have to learn from me. Like, if my, if the ladies that are on my team want to go to leaders above me and say, hey, I need your help instead, I think you should get, like, wherever you connect, I think that's important. Just like if an older woman comes to me and says, I can't really connect with you because your skin is not, like, old and wrinkly like mine. I need someone that I can connect to. I'm going to reach out to one of my artists that maybe is, has mature skin, and I'm going to say, hey, would you mind helping this customer? And I will send that customer to her because it's someone she can connect with. Same with the artists on my team. If you can't connect with me for whatever reason, I'm going to make sure you get the help that you need from someone you can connect with. And that's why, that's what I think sets me apart as a direct, as a social, social sales or direct sales or whatever, MLM, whatever you want to call it. Um, because I don't, I don't want to gatekeep any customers. Like I feel like you need to be where you feel the most welcome, the most comfortable, the most connected. And so I, it will not, it is not past me to like send a customer to somebody else that I think could help them better. And I think that's really, really important because at the end of the day, like, I just think it's the right thing to do. And if you always do the right thing, I feel like you can never go wrong. You know what I mean? Like always do the right thing by people. And the more selfish and the more greedy you get, like, oh, that could be a nice commission check. Sure. But how connected are they really going to feel to you? Are they going to reorder from you? And so I want people to feel connected, feel welcome, and feel like they have a place, like they have someone to connect to. Because as women, we don't have that a lot. So I want to be that person. Um, so anyways, if you want to be a private investigator, look up your state's licensing requirements. So you just go to the Google machine and type in how to be a private investigator in Wisconsin or whatever state you're in. Um, if you want to be a PI in Florida, I can give you a little bit more information, um, but other st every state has their own guidelines. So private investigation, Google just how to be a private investigator in my state, and it'll give you like a list of guidelines. Sometimes you need a degree, sometimes you don't, sometimes you need experience, sometimes you don't. Um, and if you want to be a saint artist, all you have to do is just text me, to the number I pinned, you can just text me and be like, hey, I want some information on the artist program. It's literally $12.95 a month to be a saint artist. You can sell or purchase as much or as little as you want. There's no limit. Um, you earn commission on every dollar you sell. So you know how some direct sales company is like, it, I don't know if you've ever done direct sales, but a lot of them are like, you have to sell so much before you'll earn commission. Saint doesn't do that. Like you can sell $1 and get 20 cents in your account, or you can sell, you know, a thousand dollars and get 400 or was it 40% is so you can sell 10,000 and get $400, like whatever, you know, the per percent commission, you know what I mean? Um, but it's really easy and people need inspiration. So just remember when you're focused on, well, what are people going to think of me? It's more important to think of how can I inspire someone else or what can I do to show up for a woman who needs, who needs that inspiration? Cause there's someone out there just like you who needs someone just like her. So if you remember that, that's going to be something that I think propels you to do great things in any field, not just in direct sales, but literally in any field. So just be an inspiration to someone. Um, anyways, if you guys have more questions or about, or if you want to get color match for makeup, if you want to join the artist program, if you have any questions about PI, um, bye Rachel, love you girl. Um, just feel free to text me. I'm so I make myself available to my customers just because I feel it's so important and connection is so important to me. So, um, just text me with any questions you have and can you post on your Insta story when you're going live on Facebook? I don't know. I don't know how to do that. There's, and you, like, I don't know how to do half that stuff. So I just know how to show up and just, like, talk. <laughs> 
just like on the podcast i don't know how to do that i don't know how they do the editing and all that stuff like i just show up and talk and they do the rest but i can like i wonder if you can that'd be really great because i'd love to be live in both places at the same time <laughs> So anyways, okay, I love you guys. Um, I hope you have a great day. I'll, I'm going to be posting a Two Shadow Tuesday today. So I love showing the different eyeshadow looks. And oh, thank you, Mariah. Sometimes they're nice. It's nice to connect with you guys. Um, the eyeshadow thing. So there's like an eyeshadow school that Saint is hosting next week. How do we get to the podcast? It's called The Dating Detectives. Um, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Amazon Music, whatever. Just you can go to my... If you go to the link in my bio, it'll take you to my link tree and go down to where it says dating detectives and, um, it'll, you, you click that link and it'll show all the episodes and then you can choose like what platform you listen to it on. Um, but anyways, yeah, don't, don't hesitate to reach out to me. I'm happy to help you with whatever questions you have. And I really appreciate you guys. I appreciate your support. Um, I appreciate everybody that has just been so kind to me and just so respectful. And there's a lot of mean people on the internet. And I just think that the people like 99.9% .9 of people here have just been so kind. And I am just so grateful for that because you never know how, like you guys, I was depressed. I was depressed. I was crying every day. I was miserable. My marriage sucked. Like it didn't suck. Like my husband's always been great, but like I just, everything sucked. Like everything was just miserable. And so since I've been here and connected with these women, I have really just, I'm going to cry. I really just thrived as a, as a mom, as a wife, as a woman, as a human. And I think that's because I've been able to connect with you guys and you guys have really just provided such great support and love and I'm so grateful for you guys so thank you so much for all of that and I love you I hope you have a great day and I'll talk to you later bye